Today, I'm going to show you how to make this fun scrap fabric block using scrap fabric. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst, and you probably have lots of fabric scraps lying around. Well, today I want to show you how you can take those and make a scrappy block that has strips going in one direction and strips growing in another direction. So let me show you what you need to make this block. So to make this block, you're going to need some scraps, obviously. So you might want to pull out some that are a bit longer because we're going to be working on the diagonal on this block. So you want to make sure that they're long enough to extend a bit past the base, which is going to be a piece of batting and backing put together in whatever size your block is. This one's a nine and a half inches. And you notice I've got a line across here. So I just used a friction pen and I drew a line. This is just a reference line. And I've drawn it across on the diagonal on the batting. And we're going to use that for reference as we put our strips down. You will also need either a seam roller. I like to use my Violet Craft seam roller. And you can look in the description below for a link to how you can get your own Violet Craft seam roller. Or you might have an iron that you'd like to use, whichever is your preference. Since I'm working at the machine, I'm just going to use the seam roller instead. So we're going to start off perpendicular to that reference line. So I'm going to grab a strip to use. Let's see, and I need to make sure it's going to be long enough. Here's a good long strip to go across here. All right, so I don't need it to go all the way across the block. I just need it to go a little bit past that reference line. So let's take this and do it a bit better. And we're going to put it in the middle ish of the block. So I want to cover that point at this end. Okay, it might be hard for you to see. Let me just put a piece of cardstock underneath here. Maybe that's a little bit better for you. There we go. So you can see the point there. You want to make sure you cover that. So I want to make sure I extend past here a bit. I want to make sure I'm covering that corner. That looks pretty good. And now you may want a pair of scissors. Those come in handy as well. A rotary cutter, whatever you want to use, but just snip off that extra fabric. I don't need all that hanging around. So I'm putting this right side up. Luckily, this piece is batik, so it doesn't really matter which way is right side up. But if you have another piece like this, for example, you want to make sure it's right side up. That's how you're going to start. And then you're going to add another piece to it. And that's going to be right side down. And we're going to do some stitching at this point. But again, we're lining up these pieces. It's a long raw edge. You want to put those together. And you want to make sure that piece is just a bit past that reference line. So the next step is to actually stitch those together with a quarter inch, quarter inch ish <laughs> seam. So let's do that and see what happens next. So now I'm going to stitch these pieces together and I can feel the edge of the batting here. So I just need to be a little bit off the batting when I start. And I don't need to lock my stitches. All you might want to reduce the stitch length a little bit to keep the stitches close together. I just need to go a little bit past that reference line. I don't need to be going a long way past it so I can trim these up a little bit if I need to afterwards. So now the next step is to open this up. And if you've got an iron, you can iron the strips open or you can just use a seam roller like I like to do. So I can just do this all at the machine. So I'm just gonna continue adding strips as I go along to the one side. Just see, I'm always fussing trying to figure out what's the best strip. The best one's probably the one you don't think about, but anyway. <laughs> so again, face down with all the rest of the strips. Just make sure that they extend past the batting at the edge and past the reference line there and just continue to sew them on. So once I filled up one side of the batting, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill up the opposite side. Same method. And yes, you might notice that I'm sewing from the reference line out now. It's just a little bit easier to do that. It has the same effect, so it doesn't really cause any issues. So I've got one half of the block done. And now I want to put strips on it going in the opposite direction. So let me explain how I'm going to do that. So first off, if you had 
any of these strips that are a long, long, long way, like let's say up to here, past that reference line, you probably want to cut them off. Now I know you can't see the reference line anymore. It's tucked back underneath here, but you can sort of see it at either side here. So we're going to kind of use those before we put our next strip down. I'm going to take this one and put it down. And now instead of putting it down face up, you actually want to put it down face down. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of line it up as best I can, making sure all the other pieces are down. I know I've got some extra long pieces here. We're just going to run it from one end to the other, kind of checking it a little bit back and forth. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then I'm just going to run a quarter inch seam along here. So this is our first strip going the other direction, parallel to that drawn line, roughly. idea to use a wider strip here so it covers any of these little bits and pieces. You could also go in and trim them off if you wanted to. You could use a rotary cutter and if you did that you want to make sure that you fold back <laughs> the batting so you don't cut through it obviously but scissors will work just as well. Okay so we've got this little guy here and we're going to press him open and then I'm going to continue adding more strips on here. So let's see here. I'll use this one if it's long enough. Oh yeah, that'll work fine. So here we're making sure that our strip extends past the edges of the batting and we put this right side down and match up the long raw edge of that first stitched strip there. And then you're just gonna open this strip up and give it a bit of a press there. And I'll just continue on filling up the rest of that batting area. Don't forget to open up and press them every time you add a new strip. All right, so that's my last piece. You can see my batting and backing are all covered, but there's still something else that has to be done before this is the completed block, and that is to trim all these extra parts off. So I'm going to go to my cutting table and do that, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So after I've trimmed the block all up to the uh, backing, that's what I did, you can see what it looks like. So here's our block where we've got strips going one direction and strips going in another direction, so that's kind of fun. and. Here are all the fabric scraps that I have left over that can be used to make another project. I have other videos on how to make blocks with scrap fabrics, so be sure to check the description below the video for links to those. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to get in front of other viewers just like you. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com. I mean, oh dear. Yeah, that's a bit of a mess.